interested to figure out what's going on with all the hyenas. Now, Michael, you're wondering if I think if the hyenas would attack the jackal. Nah, I don't think so. I think that those, especially the side striped jackal, will probably run off. However, if it was blackback jackal, they're quite cheeky. They may have tried to try to hang around, but all a hyena's got to do is just charge at them, and I can tell you right now, they'll move out of the way like bowling pins. <laughs> they they want to take on a hyena because even though hyenas not necessarily going to want to eat a jackal if there's especially if there's a carcass to scavenge on they'll rather just eat that that's the easier option you know they want to get into an altercation the jackal will lose their lives but you see jackals constantly interacting with other predators and we, we see this with hyenas too i mean a hyena when it goes in to to ideally try and steal a carcass it doesn't want to have to engage in any type of conflict at all it'd rather just go in grab a chunk here, annoy the other predator and then run off and the jackals will do the same thing but because they're smaller they sort of have to take more of a back seat. I had a very interesting sighting once of um, a black backed jackal feeding on a hippo carcass and the lions were full and fat and laying off to the side fast asleep. All the vultures came in and they'd started feeding on it and that's how full these lions were, they didn't even care. And there's also so much meat to go around on that hippo carcass. Those, those vultures, the amount of vultures that there were going to do definitely some damage. They're going to eat quite a bit of meat, but not, not the whole hippo. And this jackal was chasing the vultures around like you have no idea. I had got some great pictures, but unfortunately I lost my hard drive with all those images on them, which was a bit silly. But of vultures standing with their wings out, standing, having face-offs with, with the jackal. And it was amazing. The thing was just about spitting and snarling and growling at all of the vultures. wasn't having any of it. Let's quickly go in here, because this is where it sounded like the others were calling. This is the old hyena den. Let's just check it. <laughs> Bonnie, you said to try say black back jackal five, ta five times over. I don't know. I reckon, I think I could have, have an accidental moment on air if I try and say that too many times. <laughs> Quickly, I'll get super tongue tied. I'll practice, I'll practice when I'm back at camp. There are hyena tracks coming into this den. No, they're not old either. Uh, let's just have a quick look around the old den. This is the den of Fulamon's cut line. Doesn't look like there's anyone home right now. Might also... I don't know where they're going to go and drink water. Treehouse Dam would probably be the closest. Also having a little look around here to see if I can see any movement. But no. There's no one here right now. But they came through here. Let me just quickly go all the way around. I think it'll be the easiest way out. He definitely moved through lots of fresh tracks here. Are oh, those leopard tracks as well? No, I can't tell the difference because there's so many hyena footprints here. So I think it's quite interesting this morning. We haven't seen any of the iconic main sort of members of the Juma clan. We haven't seen um, Gwen. We haven't seen Madam. We haven't seen Ribbon. We haven't seen any of them. We've been seeing sort of the younger ones. I don't know how old Comet is, that male hyena. I'm not sure. Um, but it's, it's very interesting and it seems to be the, the younger ones, well, the misfits, the ones that aren't in, in top of the matriarchal system are all moving around quite a bit this morning. So nothing here, so where could they be? Unless they were just looking for each other and maybe they've gone straight back into that drainage sign, drainage sign, drainage line where we had uh, June. Hmm. Oh, warthogs. Sorry, Craig. They weren't here just now. There's a whole family of pigs. Probably watching me going, What's wrong with you? Why are you driving past us? They must be living. I reckon they've just come out of that termite mound. There must be a burrow or something there. There's a family of warthogs that we see on a regular basis around here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like... An, looks like three, four... Four youngsters. Or five. No, five. There's more. Oh my goodness, there's a whole lot. Two big adults and then the rest of them are youngsters. But you might not be able to see them because they're hiding away to the left. So there's a whole lot. But isn't this nice? We're seeing such a, a, a variety of animals today. 
which is really, really quite cool. And I'm just hearing something about hyena. What are they saying? Uh, maybe Ali is on it. But if they call again, at least we'll be able to pinpoint their exact location now, unless they're on the move. But these warthogs don't look like they're going anywhere. I think they've just woken up and starting off their day with some grass, the equivalent of maybe having oats or porridge for breakfast. Catherine, you say you're very excited to see warthogs. Well, that makes me very excited. I'm glad that you're enjoying this. They are m one of my favorite animals. Naughty, though, when you try and domesticate them. Don't try and domesticate them. It's the worst decision in the whole world. We had a little warthog named Emma. She was so naughty. But when they live out here in the bush, then I suppose they are fine. And especially out in this area, there's no farmers, so we don't care how... They churn up the grass and dig all the roots out and make big bare patches. That does not bother us at all out here. As long as they stay in the reserve, of course. But warthogs are escape artists. Let me tell you that they are great at digging. Obviously, we see this. They live in burrows underneath the ground. So that firstly tells you that they're pretty good at digging. But they are one of the largest culprits between jackals, warthogs, and hyenas. At digging, and wild dogs are pretty good at it too. They're quite naughty. At digging underneath the fences. And all you need is one of them to go out, and I promise you, lions will slip through the smallest of gaps underneath the fences too. So it's important that you, you try and monitor your fence lines. But warthogs are naughty, always going in and out. Now, Afzal, you're wondering how many piglets can a warthog give birth to? It's normally about six or so, but unfortunately most of them don't e make it to adulthood. It's a really tough life for these warthogs, just as it is, I suppose, for any young animal being brought out into the wilderness. It's very tough. Lots of odds against them. Firstly, they, they fight the cold. They fight the extreme heat. If it's a drought, there might be limited food sources and, and water around. And when you're something like a warthog, unfortunately, you fall on the menu for many, many different animals out here. So that's their biggest problem. Snakes will eat them. Birds of prey. Lions, leopards, hyenas, cheetah. Even jackal will go after youngsters. So it's, a, it's quite a, a strenuous life for them. So if a sow can successfully raise two warthogs to adulthood, that's fantastic. There's definitely no shortage in the warthog populations out here. They're very, very good. They do take a, a hammering, though, however, during the drought. They definitely lose condition pretty quickly. And now, a question from Lucy. We'll have to have a close-up look at one of these warthogs. You're wondering, is there a reason why they're called warthogs? Yes, there is. So if you look very carefully on that female, she has got a pair of warts protruding just below her eye. Can you see that? I don't know what she's eating. What are you doing? Did you eat something you were not supposed to eat? No, now she's back down again. So they've got the sort of, it's like a cartilage, I suppose. And uh, they've got one pair below their eyes, and then the males, the big boars, get two pairs. They have a second pair normally just above where their tusks are. And they can get quite large, so that's where they get the name warthog from. Turtle dove is also calling now. There's a brew brew, sounding a bit like a telephone in the distance. But no more whooping sounds of the hyena, I'm afraid. Which is a pity. <laughs> Manushka, you said that this is Tingana's favorite food. It is. He loves to feast upon warthogs. And I think the Anderson male enjoys the odd warthog snack too. Lions. I've seen lions digging warthogs out from underneath the ground before. But that seems to be a speciality when it comes to well, leopards being able to do that. But lots of things unfortunately feed upon these fellas and they're such sweet animals they're definitely big god they have big personalities i love watching them on hot days and them wallowing around in the mud it is honestly one of the funniest things and i'll never forget that sighting we had and just off cheetah cut line in chitwa at that pan with my favorite warthog that chased Gwen out of her den the old man with uh, no hair on the tip of his tail anymore and he came running in and he was chasing away another male. I think that was getting too friendly. Or trying to get too friendly with his uh, his family. 
and it was hilarious. He chased the man away and he came running across the road, dirt and dust all kicking up behind him and then he sort of dived down into the mud face first, legs behind him and was just so happy and just wallowed around it was just the happiest thing you've ever seen in your whole life so that was quite nice okay warthogs thank you so much oh i've scared them don't run away we'll leave them oh they're going back to, to eat again right i'm going to still try and find these hyenas i think i'm going to make that my mission for the day so perhaps we'll pop past the den at some point i'm going to send you across to ellie now who seems to be doing a mission of her own Well, it seems like it's been a very busy morning for the lions. So I'm just going to actually sit here for a few moments while I tell you guys what happened. So in case we hear anything else. So we were at Treehouse Dam and then we started hearing something that sounded like a distress call. So we were a bit puzzled and, you know, very big hopes that perhaps there was a leopard. Hyenas were coming and we started hearing all this hyena. So we quickly dashed off and uh, we found a few hyenas that were running. But not like, you know, that normal gait, but properly running towards this little gallery and then we got hold of the guys on the radio and it seems like the lions as soon as they left us they carried on walking and it might actually be the sticks the ones that are on little gallery not the Kahumas. but it seems like the, the two male lions actually caught a hyena and that's why it was there was so many so much noise all the hyenas coming around and we saw a few and then heard a few going in that general direction now I think they might have killed that hyena but I'm not a hundred percent sure because we can't get hold of the guys on that side but my goodness, <laughs> it's been a very um, adrenaline filled morning so I wonder if perhaps Taylor couldn't also hear those hyenas that were calling earlier on because they were being quite loud but wow <laughs> no, it's not, very, not an easy morning for hyenas but a very interesting morning for lions it seems like everyone's just been moving up and about now Sam and I actually wanted to try and go and look for that other male that could potentially be somewhere around Juma still but we're not too sure because the tracks got lost and I'm not too sure where the guys were following up so I think we're going to back trace ourselves and go back to Treehouse Dam and see what else there is there and then we're maybe gonna go around Galago Shortcut go have a look at that area or perhaps Taylor's going that area I'm not too sure yet but yeah it was I've never seen a hyena run it was well not never seen a hyena run but I've never seen them run this one's where they were going straight to where this other hyena was calling so we've actually been chatting about hyena calls and animals answering and so on so often what will happen is that they can recognize the each other's voices so particularly if it's a female in distress oh no that's a warthog <laughs> i saw a mane and i'm like oh my god it's a lion <laughs> but no it's a warthog Okay, so Taylor's gonna go check around Galago Shortcut Hyena Den. So we're gonna carry on checking down, down around here. Maybe we'll be able to get something else here. But it is amazing how animals surprise you. And it's funny because these lions walked up to quarantine, stole whatever it is that somebody killed, and then pretty much came back straight south. So I'm sure because there are tracks for the sticks on the main road that pretty much come out walk a bit on the main road and then go back in so I think that's what our two boys were were hearing earlier on now I keep seeing stumps that look like lions I think my brain is a little bit excited about everything that's been happening this morning but you can yeah Seb and I were very surprised about that noise it was a very strange and you don't often hear a hyena making that particular call so just to finish my thought from earlier, I, I feel like Taylor's starting to rub off on me. <laughs> I've got a bit of a squirrel syndrome now. I get excited and lose focus. Um, I think what happened is that that particular one, because it was making such a distress call and because they can recognize who's making that call, then that's why we had so many hyenas running in that particular direction, probably to, to try and mob or see what's happening or come to the rescue of their fellow hyena. Now I suppose we're going to have to wait, hopefully social media will update us later on as to what actually happened and if the hyena got away. What a morning, it doesn't happen often so I wonder what this hyena was up to because they're very creatures. So unless the lions started stalking it, perhaps it also had a kill that the lions wanted. It seems like that's what's on the menu today, a bit of scavenging. 
All right, let's maybe head back to ooh, Treehouse Dam. See if we can have another glimpse of that black color barbet. And if not, then just we'll just go around the southern part of the reserve, see what else there is around here, because so far it's been a surprise-filled morning. <laughs> I don't know what else. Maybe this is the morning where we're going to find that pink elephant <laughs> that we were talking about yesterday or the day before. <laughs> It is, I think it's funny, I think sometimes we, we forget just how important it is to stop and listen because you can tell a lot of what's happening or where the animals are just by listening because often you'll hear elephants feeding, you'll hear in prowler rutting or like now the hyena, maybe lions calling in the distance. So I think our sense of hearing and not only the tracking plays a very important role and I'm sure you guys have seen it a few times when lions are very vocal in the mornings, often the best thing is just to stop switch off your car because the, the engine noise and everything else doesn't allow us to hear them if they're roaring from a distance and then you can sort of decide where you want to go and what you want to see. Whew. All right, starting over. <laughs> now I am, that's, no. Makeup girl, you're wondering why what I meant by social media. Where um, I some of the lodges are very active or have a high presence in social media, and they often, if there are very high-profile sightings, like perhaps a lion chasing a hyena or something along those lines, and they share them on their their Facebook and Twitter pages, and that's sometimes how we get updates from the animals that roam around in this area of what they do in areas where we can't see them. So sorry, that's what I meant about it. So I think the guys from Chitwa and Nkoro were at that sighting, so I'm sure they'll be able to let us know later on. And if not, then we always chat to the guides and get a bit of an idea of what's happening. Um, not too far from Treehouse Dam again. Perhaps we'll find something. I was hoping for some tracks for Shungile. And I was laughing yesterday because when the boys were driving, I kept hearing this leopard sewing and I was like, ah, oh, maybe Tingana is back. And then I believe it was spotted on the dam cam not too long afterwards. So I'm sure he did his usual turnaround, came down Galago, went into the drainage, went for a drink and then carried on. But it's good to, to see that he's been around because we've been missing him. He hasn't been here for too long, which has been good as well because then we've managed to see him Bullock as they obviously avoid each other. So I think maybe Tingana actually went to a few of the spots where he could smell Mpula and that's probably why he was just so vocal last night because I think I heard him call at least 10 times. I thought, no, I keep seeing lions and leopards everywhere now. Alright, maybe we'll get a bit of a different view from Treehouse Dam. Maybe something else has made its way. Another black colored barbed or another tiny little bird. That would be nice. And of course, would like to see the chicks, the left wing chicks. Couldn't see them this morning. Oh, some impala drinking. Well, that's very peaceful. I think this is probably the tranquil and nice and serene <laughs> um, scene we need right now after such an exciting morning. Hello guys, coming down for a drink. So we've got a bachelor herd of impala, and by bachelor of course I mean all the boys. A few of them are drinking. What a lovely sight. <laughs> Still quite a bit edgy. I'm sure they also heard the commotion earlier on, so they're quite alert. <laughs> And of course, in every group of boys, there's always a bit of feistiness. And Paul is also there. Amongst the bachelor groups, they have very strict hierarchies. So they're always trying to reassert that hierarchy and just show who's the dominant one. Hmm, that's an upside down world. Look at that. <laughs> what is stunning when the water is just this still, that we get that beautiful reflection. There's a troublemaker. There's plenty of water for all of you. No? 
Maybe not. <laughs> My water. Mm, are we gonna have a duel? We might. Jay, do you say that the impala are always so pretty? I agree with you. I think they are my favorite antelope. They are f pretty common, as we all know by now. But they're <laughs> they're interesting to look at. <laughs> Up to no good. So it's good to see that some of them are at least enjoying the peaceful scene. But we've got that troublemaker that keeps chasing everyone up and down from the water. I think maybe you're trying to climb on the hierarchy ranks. That's why you're being full of nonsense. Gotta save that energy for May next year. I'm just watching because I'm sure he's gonna chase somebody else. Maybe he just wants to play and nobody wants to play with him because everybody keeps running away. <laughs> Catherine, you're saying that they're also very lively. They are indeed. It was a very cold morning today when we started out and I'm actually wearing even two pairs of gloves. Luckily Tristan forgot his, so I'm wearing his as well. And I think now that it's warm, they've come down for a drink, it's time to get the organism and energies up and get get moving. And this is such a vital part of the impala and by this I mean this playing and chasing each other. Uh, it allows them to keep fit, to practice fighting and just start establishing themselves or start knowing what to do in the in for next year May when they start moving around and they start looking for mating rights and they try to herd females and just have them in in a small territory for a while while they mate with all of them. But we did see them also running away for dear life when that hyena came past running. <laughs> They were, as a matter of fact, just as confused as us about what's, what was going on, and rather than an alarm call at the hyena, they all started running. It seemed like maybe wild dogs were chasing them. <laughs> but then we saw the hyena running and we knew. Because you haven't even had a proper drink yet. You've all been playing around. I think maybe... Our lively friend here is done. Maybe he will also surrender and have a drink. Because there are so many more coming, but it just seems like he's not letting anyone in that particular patch. <laughs> Such a wonderful scene. It's about 10, 15 males that are coming through. Quite a nice large bachelor herd. I think, I actually have a suspicion that this could have been some of the guys that the... Uh, <laughs> and now we've got the Egyptian goose taking one of the <laughs> out of the impala's book and chasing everyone else around. There was another Egyptian goose that came down, so I think that quite upset this one. And the impala's obviously got a fright. We've got the invader landing there. Hmm. This is strange because Egyptian geese are normally found in pairs, so I wonder if maybe this is actually an invader or are they just being silly and not recognizing each other, which could also happen. Sometimes birds in particular, they're so intent in their, <laughs> in their fighting and claiming their territory that they forget that they're actually together. We'll see if it comes down into the water, then we'll know. So one in the water. <laughs> Rebecca, you're saying that these keys are always so loud. They are indeed. They like to bully everyone around the water and they don't allow other Egyptian geese around and constantly chasing each other away. 
But I think he's calming down now. Realize that the Impala is bigger and he can go and have a drink there. They are both of them calling. Guys, I think you are related. Arla Amor, you say it's perhaps an an adult and a juvenile. Mm, could be, although they both look fully colored to me. But it's definitely one of the possibilities of what might be happening around here. I wonder. Okay. Are you guys on? I did see earlier on the lapwing chicks, but I think they're hiding now. Sammy Jane, you're saying that this is your first goose in a tree. <laughs> well, it's very common for Egyptian geese, the ones that we get in this part of the world, to go on trees and they often roost on top of the trees. And I think that for a while back there was there was talks of calling them the African tree duck just because of their habit of going on top of the trees where it's a lot safer because you can imagine you don't really want to share your space with <laughs> any potential predators on the ground when you can easily fly away <laughs> All right. I think we're gonna leave this beautiful space. It's been good for the soul to calm down and just recharge our batteries. And off we go. Let's see what's what else is happening around this beautiful area. What is I'm not too sure what the guys are following up on the radio. But I think maybe, hmm, what do you say, Seb? Let's maybe go give it a bash around that new road, see if maybe Shadow has decided to come out again. Yeah. That would be nice. Yeah. Maybe we'll get lucky. Yeah, we're around yes, around that new road and that whole area, I think. So maybe let's just go see if, if there's anything, why not? Maybe Taylor and I will swap uh, <laughs> reserve areas. Sorry, Megs, can you repeat that uh, question, please? M. Riedel, you're wondering if there are any eland in Juma. Um, I haven't seen any, and I don't think the guides have seen any ever, although ever might be a strong word. Um, normally, eland are found further north in the Kruger Park. They prefer areas that are a bit more arid, where the grass is longer. We've got a lot of water sources around here and the grass is not that long because it's not ideal for game viewing so we don't get to see them in this part but they are in the general ecosystem that we are in part of the greater uh, Kruger Park I think funny enough the last eland that was seen in the Sabi Sand was last year during the drought um, on lion sands but I think it was in the Kruger side of the reserve which was a very unusual sighting because it's very rare to see them all the way down there. All right. Hopefully we'll see something. Oh, Taylor is finally joining me on the gloves team. So let's go over to her and see if, her, if she can feel her fingers yet. No, I've just put them back on. <laughs> <laughs> I had them off because I thought it was easier to warm my hands up but then we just jumped onto triple M now I cannot tell you the wind I don't know where this wind has come from but it's picked up it feels like it is like minus 155 degrees it is freezing even Craig is crunched up in the smallest ball you've ever seen I just want to hide behind my steering wheel so that I don't have to expose too much of my body to the wind I can't believe how it's got even colder than what it was when we started the safari this morning. So I think what we'll do is we're not going to stay on Triple M for too long. We're probably going to turn off it and try and escape the wind. And then start checking around in pilot planes. And we'll go back towards the new road. We'll check Zoe's again, Rebecca's, all those roads. And just try and figure out 
whereabouts a shadow has gone because I haven't, haven't even seen her tracks yet so we might start at actually it start right at Shibamo and, and go from there but to me driving around and not seeing any of her tracks whether it because she was just waiting for those lions to move on or perhaps even those hyenas she doesn't want to get caught in a situation where she has her young cub on the ground and hyenas are around they definitely hassle her so she could have just been waiting and maybe she would have started moving again now and that's what we're hoping is going to happen or we're just going to bump into her now with a scrubber in her mouth that would be ideal hey Craig wouldn't that be nice again to have a sighting like that that was quite great and then I don't know if Ali told you but I did just hear on the radio that apparently it was the Styx lions that were moving in and out of uh, the property and on the southern boundary they crossed into little guys it's not in Kahumas so I wonder where the Kahumas are I haven't heard about uh, their position for quite some time now I know the other day they said that they had their tracks on the boundary of Manuleti and Buffalo's Hook so they really could just be anywhere they just they're so sneaky as well all the animals in the sabi sand tend to sneak in and out okay you'll turn off on the next road craig don't worry we're gonna get out of this cold wind now this wind is not great it's definitely going to chap our lips I can already feel i'm going to have to add some lip ice shortly hmm when good old winter i suppose you're allowed to have chap lips once a year on the big change from summer to winter there's not a lot of cars around I haven't seen many other vehicles driving around today Roshni you say that some elephants could be nice yes that would be ideal I'd be very happy if we could find some elephants now this morning we had quite a few tracks but unfortunately they crossed off of our traverse uh, look like quite a big herd they'd come from Mumba Road obviously maybe maybe stopped had a drink at uh, Twin Dams and then they crossed out where we had those hyenas um, and then off they went again I don't know why they didn't hang around I know Byron had swimming alleys yesterday at Chitwa that's another possibility we could always go around towards Chitwa but for now I think I need to stay focused and concentrate on finding one animal at a time so until we find the leopard we won't go anywhere else Woo! miserable it's just it must look so strange to all of you though watching us and it's sunny but we've obviously wrapped up in all the layers and and I know that obviously it's not freezing cold it doesn't snow in this area but the type of cold that we get the chill factor with the wind is something else it creeps in through every crevice and your, your body starts to burn it gets so cold it's really not great oh my goodness that makes sense so apparently it's 59 and 15 what did I just hear I thought I heard something mm, obviously not anything anyways last night how's this as everybody got back from safari guess what we heard a leopard calling <laughs> right around camp I thought I imagined it because it had happened the night before and I thought now I tell you hearing things and then we were chatting about it around dinner last night I was like oh okay so other people heard it too okay I didn't make it up there uh, I wonder who was around camp I actually didn't see any male leopard tracks around camp this morning oh Impala I got excited I thought it was maybe a leopard running across the road but it's not a leopard running across the road there's gonna be another one coming now Are you gonna do a big jump for us no average just stretching the legs no more no more Impala rounds ah that will be the day okay let's go this way so there's still no leopard tracks around here just lots of Impala tracks now Melissa you're wondering if there are any giraffe around now <laughs> funny you ask that remember I told you earlier about that interesting encounter we had with the game viewer and the smells of perfume that were coming off of the cars well one lady yelled at me from the back in a very South African accent Het jy gesien vandag? <laughs> which means have you seen any giraffe today in Afrikaans <laughs> But it was so funny though, because I was completely taken off guard. So I sort of looked at her and I was like, pardon? <laughs> I didn't know what she was asking. Then her husband repeated in English, have you seen any giraffe? 
and I was like, so I said, no, no, we haven't seen you. We've seen one hyena, that's all we'd seen. They were quite happy that they'd seen some lions. I didn't even bother telling them that you'd also seen the lions of Ali. I just said, oh, it's so amazing, wonderful. But it was so funny though, because literally I think I, you know, I get fights every now and then things just jump out next to me. I did one of those when she shouted from the back of the car. Okay, <laughs> did you also get a bit of a fright? You know, because it was early, cold, and was still half asleep, you know. Hi, how's it going? Het jij Camille Pert gezien vandaag? Or vandaag gezien, I don't know which way it's supposed to go. Afrikaans is really terrible. I can't speak it, unfortunately. I try, and then everyone laughs at me. So we'll just leave it at that, my poor attempt at Afrikaans. Alien parents, and they can't, my dad can say two words. He can say fang, which is to catch, and he can say khoi, which is to throw. But my dad being playing cricket, that's the only two words he needed to know. <laughs> and then I don't think my mom can say one word. I laugh at her, I try and teach her local greetings in Hossa and Shangani and that's the most hilarious thing in the whole world. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. Well, I'm going to keep driving around here and hopefully we'll pick up some signs of shadow. Maybe even the hyenas pop out again, who knows. But let's go across to Ali now and let's see if Afrikaans is one of the many languages that she can speak. Well, I can't really speak Afrikaans, Taylor, but I understand quite a bit, so people cannot say bad things about me without me knowing. <laughs> so, I think, luckily, because I've been living in this area for the last five, six years or so, then it's definitely one of the languages that I've sort of managed to pick up, but I'm not fluent. It's, I struggle with the pronunciation. It's very hard. Lots of noises that I can't really <laughs> say all too well. But right, what was that? Okay, nothing to worry about. Let's see what else there is around here now. I think maybe let's just go to check. We change our, our route because Taylor's going to go check around that area for Shadow again. So, no point in the two of us driving the same roads up and down. So we've decided to come and explore a different area, perhaps towards the middle port, maybe we'll make our way towards Bufelsuk Dam at some point this morning, perhaps Gallery Dam, see what's been lurking out and about. So I feel like this is an area of the property that hasn't been driven too much this morning, so maybe there are still a few golden pockets in here to come and have a look at. And like we said, there's another male lion somewhere on this property. Not too sure where it's gone off to though. If um, Taylor didn't see any of these tracks around, perhaps he's already crossed over. I'm not sure, but definitely worth having a look, don't you guys think? Craig, you're wondering what local languages the guides speak on the radio. Well, it's actually well, what you hear is when you hear us on the radio, it's mostly what's it's a dialect that's called Fanagalore which is pretty much a mix it's an old mining language and it's a mix of Afrikaans English and some of the local languages for the tribes that live in this area especially Shangan so when we talk on the radio we don't talk full on Shangan but uh, the names of the animals and we say them in in Shangan which is a normal procedure in this area the Shangan is the language of the tribe that lives in this area the Shangan tribe now, in terms of animal-related things, I think we can all we can all defend ourselves in Shangan, but <laughs> when it starts becoming a, a conversation about something else, and we struggle a little, or at least I do. I do know, however, that James, Tristan, and Brent are very good at Shangan, and I think they can speak a little bit more than than what I can. But definitely on the list, I am hoping that when James comes from the Mara, he'll be able to teach me a little bit more of Shangan, perhaps even a few Swahili words. I just love learning as many languages as possible, so yes. But when you hear us on the radio, it's a mix of many things. But the animal names normally in Shangan, or a bit of Zulu every now and again, and then of course a lot of English. Now, no tracks around here. Hmm, smells like fire. Umpa, you're wondering if I know how to say hello in Shangan. Well, yes, there are <laughs> there are two ways, let's put it that way. One of them is quite informal, <laughs> so whenever you see somebody, you just say aye, like aye. But you've got to say it like with a bit of a swagger, because otherwise it doesn't work. Right, Seb? Yes. You can't just say aye, it's going to be aye. <laughs> and if not, if you're just greeting someone and you want to be a bit more proper, you just say avushen or avusheni. 
and that's the way of saying good morning or good day. And then if you want to ask them how they're doing, because you can't ask say good morning without saying how are you, you just say Abushen Kundani, and then the other person will reply Ae and Kona or Mfukile. I feel it's almost like a ritual. You don't really, you're not really answering. You're just playing a song. But it is beautiful. It sounds beautiful. I love it. What is Steffi? You're wondering if there's much. Is that a buffalo? It between Zulu, Shangan, and Swahili. Well, between Shangan and uh, and. Zulu and Swahili. Uh, sorry, I just want to see if that's or an elephant. Hang on, I can just see. No, it's an elephant. I think. Let's just let me just go around. So yes, Zulu and Shangan are very different from Swahili. Sorry, so I'm just going to turn around. But Zulu and Shangan are fairly similar. They come from a common root. So actually that's why sometimes we speak a mix of the two things because they are fairly similar and a lot of the words are actually the same. But Swahili is a very different uh, language. For example, let's take lion. Lion, we all know that in Swahili it's Simba, thanks to the Lion King. And in Shangan it's Ngala. And I think in Zulu it's Ngala as well. So it's quite different. Now, where has this big grey thing gone off to? Also on a mission. <laughs> Everything. Okay, definitely elephants. I can see trunks now. <laughs> I think for a second there, they were too into an area that was too thick, so it was very hard to see them. Where are you guys? Oh, more to our right. It seems like actually two youngsters, but they haven't stopped moving and they're going quite quickly. So I'm hoping we're going to be able to spot them in, an, in a spot that it's a bit more open. Mm -mm. It's actually getting thicker and thicker. Alright. Hopefully here they'll, they'll swing past so you guys can, so we can have a look. Even if it's a short one so that you guys see that I'm not actually making up stories or making up animals. Because they are somewhere in there. But it's just very thick in that particular area. So I don't want to go off-roading and then perhaps surprise them. Oh, Ellie's. <laughs> I can hear them breaking branches. Yes, I see a trunk now. They're going to come onto our screen soon. There we go, we can just see them, barely see their shape and their movement walking around. Well, nice to see some elephants. Now they were in a bit of a lower ground when we saw them, so I could just see a dark back and that's why I thought perhaps it was a buffalo, because I could only see one in the beginning. But it seems it's actually two of them. But you see they're going very quickly as well. Everything seems to be running today. What's up guys? Hmm. Strange. Very strange. Alright, it seems like they're heading... Maybe they'll come a bit closer to the road. Yay! And we'll be able to have another look. Now it seems like two young bulls. And they they still they still seem a bit too young to be on their own. So I wonder if perhaps they're actually not just trying to find the rest of their herd. Yep. It's even thicker here. Rashni, you're wondering why they're moving so quickly. Um, I think it's either they were play fighting 
and the one is pushing the other one or I think more than anything they're just trying to find the rest of the herd um, unfortunately we're not going to be able to follow them anymore because they've gone behind a very big termite mound and I know there's quite a big dip and drainage line down there so it's a bit it's a bit of a tough area I don't think we're going to be able to have a nice view no what was that perhaps maybe even they spotted that other lion that was around <laughs> I don't know they were Hmm. All right, we're going to see what these elephants get up to. Perhaps they'll come out into the open. But while we do that, let's go over to Taylor, who's bumbling about. We were bumbling. We we're actually laughing at a herd of impala, and we're not looking at impala anymore. We've got a male steenbok in the long grass, just feeding about. However, what happened with the impala was we saw one running on a massive animal pathway and sort of making those guttural noises that they normally do during rucking, uh, rutting season. And then an impala from the other side, whew, Vice Jambok, came racing across the road and they looked like they were about to run and clash heads. And then they didn't, they just like sort of greeted each other and that was the end of it. But it was really funny the way that they came charging over, I don't know, maybe they were just long lost friends. Nice little sighting, quick sighting of a Steenbok as they usually are. Okay, so, now, we're on Philemon's cut line. I wanted to come and give this road another check, even though we've all driven it about a hundred times today. Just because I haven't seen those leopard tracks coming out. So we're going to go back towards Shibamu. But I'm just checking very carefully through some of these gaps. Maybe Shadow's already made a kill and she's feeding on something. And we know she doesn't like to take her kills up trees, which actually makes it even harder for us to try and find them. Because her and her daughter completely disappear in the grass and knowing shadow she'll probably stash it under a fallen tree and a lot of those bush willows that have been pushed over she seems to utilize them quite a fair amount so give it a bash I'm gonna just check on this junction though to see you know these tracks don't cross through here because there's another pathway she likes to use just up ahead I didn't see any leopard tracks around there so let me check carefully here the wildebeest that was walking around. Uh, we've got Shibamu here. Oh, I think that is civet tracks. Oh, Shadow's cubs footprints will be getting quite big now. They won't be tiny anymore. There's lots of activity of nocturnal creatures around here every single morning. White-tailed mongoose, civets, genets, all sorts of things. Often honey badger tracks around here. We have seen honey badger on this road though. So now I'm just thinking, Aubrey said those tracks were coming up this road and then they went going west. But now if we didn't see them on Philemon's cut line, where is she? She must be here. Well, this is what my mind tells me. She could have just leapt across the road. They seem to like to do that, the leopards and the lions. <laughs> Jade, you've said that Shadow has very good camouflage, that's for sure. And I still, I still don't have the leopard tracks here yet. But we were, everyone was driving up and down here, so it is a huge possibility that, you know, those tracks have now been squashed. Just, I don't think she would go back south because it seems like the, all the lines in the Sabi sand are just south of our traverse at the moment. I don't think she'd want to take her cub into any danger like that. And we haven't heard any alarm calls coming from the side. The only alarm calls I've actually heard this morning were those go away birds and squirrels that were alarming in the Mulwati. And then we drove through there, there was no leopard tracks at all, there was actually no sign of any predators. There might have just been a raptor or something flying about that startled them, but other than that, it was actually particularly quiet. Oh yes, we had the elephant tracks also crossing through there. See, Shadow loves this road. Also, she loves Shubamo. This used to be the favorite road of Karula and Hosanna and Shongile at one point in their life too. They were often found about here. There's another steenbok. That was a big jump for a small antelope. It's so camouflaged because it's just hiding straight through there. Just next to, just down to the right of that silver cluster leaf. Tiny. Hey, and gone. That looked like a female though. 
not the same one we've just seen off it goes but potentially that male was maybe moving into this area to try and find that lovely lady we've just seen and hopefully we'll get them around here somewhere let's go and see what Ali's been up to for the last couple of minutes Well, we've decided to come on the parallel road from where we were earlier on see if maybe we can pick up on some more elephants because those two were definitely going somewhere and I wonder if perhaps they're not heading down towards the Molowati although it's a bit cold so perhaps not but let's give it a try maybe we'll get another two males this morning nice <laughs> walking in the open area that would be the great thing to see but I'm not too sure if they're gonna do that like I said I don't know if they were running away from something or they were running looking for something it was a bit of a tough call because they definitely were not standing still but they do seem still or at least through the bushes they they look like they were still too young not to be with a herd or at least somewhere in the vicinity so I'm hoping that there's going to be a herd or at least a female with a few youngsters somewhere around here and if not that's fine because we'll carry on looking for other things now there's a big termite mound that they were behind so I'm sure if we carry on down this road maybe we'll bump into them <laughs> we're onto you Elise okay maybe they've gone off too quickly for us to actually see but let's try now, I think some of the guys were also had some trucks for Tandy earlier on this morning somewhere around the Molowati so maybe there will be another leopard down there would be quite interesting to see I think the the leopard and the lion just in general the cat world has been quite unpredictable of late so always good to see what's happening and how things unfold I mean just a few I think it was a week ago or so there was that video that footage that was released of a lioness nursing a leopard cub so that was that was highly unusual I think that was pretty much all text was ever written about lions Phew, out the window because that was very I, I would have never believed it unless it was verified by Panthera which is a reputable <laughs> uh, NGO that specializes in big cats that was quite quite a crazy thing to watch I'm still not, not I don't uh, yeah I saw I think I saw it five times before I was like okay it must be real <laughs> it's not photoshopped the good thing is that that lioness is colored so if it does happen again it'll be quite interesting but of course then we all started dreaming and <laughs> getting ideas in the hand we were like can you imagine what if this leopard is raised and he thinks it's a lion and we have a leopard running around with a pride of lions <laughs> who knows I think we're, we're probably in for a surprise later on in life hopefully both of them will be fine now I think the elephants are still down in this block luckily for us there's another road that will be able to take us all the way up and um, maybe we'll carry on on that road looking for other things also no tracks around here I actually didn't pay too, too much attention earlier on if there were any tracks and I wonder where Tingana himself has gone off to so like I said we we actually woke up this morning to the sound of hyenas and something else fighting so I don't know if it was already the lions or if it was Tingana that was somewhere around seems like those lions have been quite feisty this morning all right seems like we are back on the same spot and the elephants did not come out this way so we're gonna try a different road just because well we already know how this ends so maybe time to spice up our luck and try a different road now, I'm not too sure how I'm gonna get in there there's different tracks and roads and everything moving in and out okay oh, if you can hear that those are the Aramark babblers Okay, we are going to carry on, see if we can find anything else, but let's go over to Taylor, who seems to be doing some birding this morning. Yes, I think that's what we're going to have to sort of start doing, but now I'm on the new road again. I just wanted to come and have one last look here, but sadly I can't even hear any chirping of birds now. It's funny how some days the birds are obliging and they sit still on the branches just long enough so we can get a quick view of them and then other days 
They just don't want to be seen at all. I suppose they need a holiday sometimes. So let's see if we're going to find any of our sort of our thicket birds here. Chugras, buntings maybe. Nothing, not even a starling or a fork-tailed drongo to show you at the moment. I think from here we might go to Viatella Dam, go back around that way, have a scratch around there. See how Mr. and Mrs. Egyptian Goose is doing if the Blacksmith Lapwings are going to chase any more doves out and pull their feathers out, perhaps. Now, James, you're wondering if vulture breeding season is over. Well, let's have a look. I'm going to stop here. And I did see a squirrel, but I don't know if the squirrel is going to... Can you see it, Craig? Uh, of course it's going to run away. I'm not even surprised that the squirrel... Oh, there's another one. Well done. That one's an obliging squirrel. You can have a look at the squirrel. James, I'm going to open my bird app now while you have a, a look at that squirrel sunbathing. Who obviously hasn't realized we have spotted it just yet. Otherwise, it would still not be sitting there. Now, I just want to confirm the breeding season for the vultures that we get here. I'm sure it'll be slightly different. Let's who's our first one. Hooded vulture. Let me check them up first. Breeding. That's a good spot, sitting on the knot of the tree, being able to scan and see everything that's out and about. Oh, I wish it would do its call for us because it's quite funny. Right, laying dates for the hooded vulture. Anywhere from now, from June to about October. So still going for the hooded vultures. Let's go white-backed. I'm going to scroll all the way down, it's actually quite far. Uh, foraging, breeding. Now we've got to find South Africa because they tell us about the various areas. Laying dates. Still going for the white back too, they say from June to September. So I suspect if I check the lapid face vulture, it'll probably be around the same time, but let's just go for a triple threat. Laying dates for the lappet face, May, June, July. So it's sort of finishing now for the lappet face, but it's still ongoing for the white-backed and the hooded vultures. Um, it's a pity we aren't driving on cheetah plains anymore, because remember there was a there was a white-backed vulture nest near one of the boundaries. I remember seeing. I can't remember which road it was, but I haven't actually found a vulture nest on Juma yet. So we have to we have to start looking for these things now. But now that the vegetation is sort of starting to thin out, we might get a, a chance to see the tops of the trees. We'll maybe not be able to get too close to them, but we can surely start scanning down in the valleys now. But that's a very obliging little squirrel. Thank you, squirrel. There's two of them, in fact. And they're both sitting on the nicest little spot. This is a good tree. I'm just trying. I'm just looking at it actually now since I've stopped uh, staring at my mobile device, looking at the app. There are plenty of little crevices for these squirrels to move around in lots of knots that have been hollowed out so not only will it be a good tree for the squirrels but also for barbets and any other animals that like to nest in little holes will be a good good tree there we go let's carry on and see what else we can find let's see if we can find an actual bird i could hear some chatter of something up ahead one of the birds i'm not sure exactly which one Brian, you're wondering if there are any rare birds here and what are they? Well, the rarest is the southern ground hornbill, which we're actually quite fortunate to to see on a regular basis. How amazing is that? Normally once or a couple of times a week, sometimes we go every single day seeing a different family of hornbills. I haven't heard them lately, so they've just obviously moved out of the area, but I'm sure they'll be back. Um, you know, otherwise in terms of rare birds, I would say shy ones and that are hard to spot, like special birds. There's so something like a gorgeous bush shrike, very special uh, to see up here. Um, what else would be a, a really lucky one to see? Brent's white-throated robin that he's been trying to find for such a long time. That's also another nice one, a hard one to try and spot. Uh, we've been lucky. Koki Franklins are normally um, not super common, but we've had such amazing sightings of them in this particular area. I'm almost, they, they, they seem to love it around here. We don't see Shelley's Franklins that often either, not necessarily rare, but just ones that we don't get to spend quite a bit of time with all the time. But yeah, the rarest one will be the 
the um, the ooh, what is that? hornbills, the southern ground hornbill, and then also white-backed vultures are now endangered. So if you see them, count one of those birds, count yourself quite lucky. They're very common in this area, though. I'm trying to think what else we've got, and of course sometimes you ask these questions and you cannot think when you're asked the question and it pops back into your head again. So Brian, if I think of any more that I think are that are particularly uh, hard to spot, I suppose leopard face vultures as well. We don't see them too often. We just see them every now and then. One like the Egyptian vulture, which uh, we were trying to go and have uh, a look at. That would be quite nice. There's just you know a couple of sightings of them in this area. So that's another really amazing one to see. One that we have not seen on Safari Live. But we're gonna we're still searching for anything. It sounds like there's something about lions on the radio, so I'm gonna to listen to that. Let's go back across to Ali and see if she's found those elephants. I'm also, I was also trying to listen to the radio, but um, I'm not too sure what's going on. I don't think it's anything too important. Um, but we are heading towards Bufusuk Dam, just to go and have a look up there, see what's what's been happening around there. Maybe we'll get lucky with Tingana or Mbula or any trucks for either one of them, because we know they like hanging around that particular area. So. Hopefully we'll get to see something around there. The Ellie's unfortunately were still in that very thick block so it was not the best of places to go and have a look at them because sometimes when you have to off-road for elephants then you are pretty much up on their noses and they don't really enjoy that. So we know that they are here so we're definitely going to be looking for them in the afternoon. It started as a very cold day but it seems like the afternoon might be promising in terms that it seems there are no clouds around so likely we're going to have a nice hot afternoon which is going to be great. Oh. We can harrier hawk and then smaller species of hawks like the goshawks or the buzzards and lizard buzzard. Um, and then, well, I suppose a lot of also migratory species of eagles like the Wolberg's eagle, the steppe eagles. All sorts of beautiful birds. I'm sure there's another very common eagle that I'm missing. It's bothering me. But I can't think of the name. Hopefully it'll come back onto my head before we get to Bofosuk Dam. I'm still looking all the way on top of the branches of the tree. I think it's gonna take us a little while to get there, probably another 10 minutes or so, so if we see any eagles on the way, we'll be sure to stop and have a look. But still a bit far away from Bufuzuk Dam, so I'm hoping there will be a few more birds in there, and of course that Marshall Eagle. Okay, so Taylor is also out and about doing some birding, so let's go over to hers. Perhaps she'll get luckier with the eagles. I'm waiting for any animal to pop up in front of us now. So I mentioned to you just before I sent you all back over to Ali is that uh, I was hearing some chatter about lions on the radio. So I didn't quite know that, let's see if the squirrel's on the middle of the road having a bit of fun. So I, I didn't quite realize that the they said the Nguhuma Pride was also feeding on that wildebeest at one point. They had their tracks around there so I'm going to do a bit of investigating. I know those lions, they do like the drainage system between Quarantine and Rebecca. So I think we might take the southern road of Quarantine and just scan in across that drainage line. Then that will also give us a chance to check in and have a look at that sort of wildebeest skull to see if there's anything left of it, if our side striped jackal is still there. Or if they've also taken a break and fled off, maybe some vultures, maybe some eagles. Could be a good chance to do a bit of birding around there too. So we'll head that way now. We're going to turn onto the most southern road. Now I haven't seen any lion tracks crossing this side. The only, the only lion tracks, the female lion tracks I've seen were the ones from the Styx Pride that were down on, on Gowry, Maine. Right, you might see a, there's a, I think there's a spider web on the camera, so you're probably going to see Craig's finger. There we go. Yeah, he got it. Who needs a dust cloth? 
<laughs> oh, the spiders are still living in the car, as you can imagine. Oh, where's my turn off? Oh, it's yeah. Just trying to figure out. Mm, I can't believe we didn't hear any of this commotion, though. You know, like I said, I heard the hyenas. They were in, they were in camp. I think they may have even taken our bin, which had absolutely nothing in it. It was empty when we all went to bed tonight. But they just they just drag things, and those bins are not light either. A massive industrial rubber bin, so I don't know where that is. <laughs> Maybe we'll find it on Bushwalk one day. <laughs> Try and drag it back to camp. So I don't know why we didn't hear the lions making the kill, the distress call of the wildebeest, because it's so close to camp. You'd think that we'd be able to hear something like that. Wouldn't it be nice if I just saw lion heads pop up now? But sadly, that's not the case just yet. We'll keep searching. Uh, does anyone remember that day that Darby and I were doing a drive and we drove very slowly along the southern road and we actually spotted the Nkuhumas laying on the other side of the drainage line, just an open gap. I reckon if we do that, maybe we have a good chance of finding them because we've driven Rebecca's, we've driven off road, we're following June, of course, trying to figure out where the hyenas are also moving around. And I didn't see anything. Not even one thing of a line. Okay. Let's keep scanning. We might have to go the other road to get to that wildebeest skull. Now, Merce Salt, you're wondering how do the big five get warm on chilly mornings? Well, some of them have got fur or hair that keeps them nice and warm, of course. Uh, otherwise, I suppose they've got very thick skin. Who's this? A daker to keep them nice and warm. But they do stand out in the sun, of course, just like we do to try and warm ourselves up. No, I don't know. There was something that ran into the bushes. I suspect it was a little daker. It looked bigger than, than a steenbok. So now this is where we need to check carefully. We need to scan around here and look in some of these open gaps and see if we can find some tanned colored objects laying on the ground. Now obviously this part is a bit difficult. It's my Let me just use a glove to wipe my monitor screen. But I'm just going to concentrate and check here very carefully. It's still quite thick. So it's not as open as when Davi and I found the lines. The, sort of using the same technique they could just be right down in here I don't really want to go walking it's a bit thick to go through these drainage lines at the moment you could bump into honestly anything around here also I don't have any tracks to follow up on still no lion tracks around this way so it's fairly quiet so if we don't get anything here we'll go the middle road and we'll go back to that wildebeest skull I would like it if some no, no, I've, no, have I got lion tracks? Well, the hyenas, no, lions working here. Male lion tracks. So I'm going to have a look around here. Some squirrels also starting alarming. I'm going to check out these tracks. It seems as though Ali though, has arrived at a dam where I'm sure there will be plenty of birds. Doesn't this look beautiful? Uh, it's the glimmering sunshine in the water at Buffelsuk Dam. I think Seb is doing a stunning job. This looks amazing. It's almost like a party of <laughs> of little droplets. Now, the bird life at Buffelsuk Dam doesn't seem to be too prolific. However, we've got two hippos. Oh, well, one and a half because the one's just gone down. Great to see you guys because the last few times that I've been here in the afternoons, these guys haven't been around. So, very happy to see you. You can see his nostrils are open. I think maybe this one is also going to go down. But it's wonderful to see you guys. Where have you been every single time that I've come here in the afternoons? Maybe they go out for a party. Oh, beautiful. I think maybe you guys have just come back from wherever it is that you've been hanging out in the afternoons. So, welcome back to Buffalo Soup Dam. I have missed you. I don't know if anybody's been checking here in the last few days. I think we've been focusing more on the hippos at Chitwa. Perhaps you guys have been incursioning all the way there. You've got a very funny nose this morning. Ah, oh, there's a second one also popping out. Hello. 
Who knows? Maybe this is Scuba Steve, and that's why he's so so shy. He's come all the way from Treehouse Dam, and that's why he keeps coming up and down. Now I didn't see any trucks for hippos while we were driving on the way here, so perhaps they've come in from somewhere else. And I'm sure they were also moving until later on, like we saw the lions moving um, about. And now that it's starting to be a bit too hot, then probably that's why they've returned onto the water. I don't think this is safe for the hippos to be walking here now. Adele and Natalie, you're wondering how wide a hippo can stretch its jaws. Well, I've seen them when they do a full-on display. I'll say it's almost 180 degrees. Maybe that's a bit too much, but I would say maybe between 160 and 180. They can definitely, it's almost like if you were a human, you could dive into their jaws and not touch the top parts of their jaw. <laughs> it would be quite funny. But they, they use it as a display when they open their jaw so much. Normally it's just to try and show off the size of the tusk to the other males around. And if they're feeling threatened by anything else around, they also do it as a way of um, advertising how big they are. So that nobody tries to mess with them. I personally wouldn't mess with a hippo, I'm sure <laughs> they are a lot bigger than me. I can hear a few lapwings around. That ding, 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 ding. That's why it's called a blacksmith lapwing. Psycho Susie from Washington, you're wondering if hippos vocalize outside of the water. Um, they can, but funny enough, I don't think I've ever heard them vocalize outside of the water. I think their their preferred way of vocalizing or area of vocalizing is inside of the water. The sounds that they make also travel underneath the water surface, so they communicate while they're underwater as well. And I think maybe they just rely on the water because normally it is used to communicate to other hippos in case of males to to know that they they are in a particular spot and that that is their spot, but also between pod members. So a lot of the times it's just more convenient for them to do it in the water because the sound is going to be carried by the water and it's going to be delivered to the intended recipients. Let's put it that way. So I've, we actually, yeah, we heard them earlier on today. Steffi, you're wondering if there are any crocodiles in the water hole. I can't see any crocodiles in this water hole and like I said, we only doesn't seem to be too active. Not too many terrapins around here. I think there were just two lapwing, uh, uh, two blacksmith lapwings flying around, and just the two hippos. So I think it's quite a quite a peaceful th scene. Not too many things happening around here. I was hoping that perhaps Tingana or Mbula were going to be somewhere here. Maybe we were going to pick up some of their tracks, but doesn't seem to doesn't seem to be the the case today. So I think maybe I'm, I am getting a bit blinded by the sun, although it's a very pretty scene looking at the hippos in the water. So I think maybe we're actually just going to leave them and carry on, see if perhaps we, you know, the last minute leopard will decide to show up. It's We're roughly entering the time where he likes to feature, so who knows, maybe he'll be somewhere around here. So I think let's leave Bufosuk Dam, carry on on our bumble. Maybe we'll be able to pick up something on the road. Barren. Absolutely nothing around here. I don't blame them though. The only thing I have managed to find though is I managed, well, I managed to catch a few insects in my eye again. Hmm, which has been great. Now the jackals seem to have moved off too. They're not here anymore. We're at the wildebeest. Oh, there they are. They're hiding under the trees. Sneaky jackals, I can see you. That's very clever of them. Oh, and are they going? They are so skittish. We're so far away from you. Come relax. Calm down. I'm just hiding in the grass. I definitely think that the side striped jackals blend in much better with those golden grass than the black backed jackals do. They sort of stand out quite a bit. Now, I don't know if they're going to hang around here for the entire day. They were resting up underneath one of the, the small shrubs, but there really isn't anything left on this wildebeest skull and I'll drive you around to have a look oh, you can see, I mean there's not even another bone here so the hyenas definitely came in as well and tore it up quite a bit let's see if I'm just missing where about the rest of the carcass was 
I don't even see. Oh, I'm going a long way around. I don't even know where they killed it because I can't see. Oh, here's another leg. We'll have a look there. Oh, there's the skull. There's honestly nothing left. You might find the jackals maybe will come and chew on that. Perhaps the hyenas will come and collect it a little bit later. And then there's a leg here of the wildebeest. Just in there. Now I don't know where the other wildebeest have gone because typically they are always up here on quarantine. I don't know if they've been seen on the dam cam. But I haven't seen too many tracks of them just every now and then. I don't know where the lions killed this wildebeest though, or whoever killed it or ever took it down here because there's no stomach contents. There's very little of anything barring a leg and a skull. Now Craig there's a bunting sitting on that little shrub quite close to the end. Let me see if I can point it out to you. Over there. There we go. Oh wonderful. And there's a cinnamon breasted bunting. I think. Um, not cinnamon, golden, golden breasted. My bad. Yes, that's the golden breasted buntings. I said I wanted to find them. They're beautiful birds. They're very striking creatures. Now they're not coming here to feed on the carcass though. They're just purely hopping around. And this leadwood, a little leadwood, it's still got quite a bit of growing to do. There's another one that's beautiful. Aren't they stunning? I have to say, the buntings are definitely growing on me. They're still there. They're just fluttering around. There it is, right in the middle of your screen. Who's that? Now that looks like a fly catcher. That one that's hanging around there, it's just sat now perfectly. Hello. You're not a bunting, are you? Beautiful birds. We're very lucky to have such diverse birds. There's also a lilac breasted roller up in the top of the sky. You might be able to hear it. It's making quite a bit of noise. Now what are you looking for? Seeds or insects? They've just all landed in the grass now, so I think they're they're looking for maybe some seeds. Right, let's carry on. So no one else here. So I, I mean, there's obviously a mystery as to what's happened, whether it was the hyenas that killed this wildebeest and then the lions heard the commotion, you can imagine, came charging in and chased them off their kill. It's definitely a possibility. So I think that's why the hyenas were making such a noise. But I can't believe we just didn't hear the lions at all last night. I didn't hear one roar. And I normally always hear the animals moving around at night. Have some more luck with cats then, but let's go across to Ali now for the last few minutes of the show. Well, we didn't get the man himself, but it seems like we finally found his tracks this morning. <laughs> but they're going all the way north, so at least it gives us a starting point where to start looking for a male leopard this afternoon, which is a good thing, and it's not too far from camp. Well, eh, a little bit. But good to know that um, he's been around because I was wondering what direction he'd gone off to after he was at the pen yesterday evening. So perhaps he also heard that commotion and then started moving out, started moving up. O L O L I. <laughs> Sorry, I'm struggling with the letters. You say that this has been the best safari ever or the best start of the day ever. Um, and that Safari Live wins the internet. Yes! Life goals achieved. <laughs> it has been a very entertaining drive. Everything from the lions to the hyenas to the jackals. Everything has just played their part today. So we're very happy about that. I think Taylor and I have had just as much fun. And of course, our friends the birds have been coming out and about, which is also a good thing. And now I can't wait to see what's going to be out and about this afternoon. Hopefully lots of things. What is it? It's just a branch in the tree. I thought maybe it was something else. Whew. What a morning we've had actually. It's been really good. Hey Seb, we had no expectations going out. Yeah. That's, pro that's, that's when the magic happens where you're just open to anything and everything coming your way. So it was so great to see those lions walking out in the open in quarantine for a while. It was beautiful and then of course all of the hyenas and everything that's been happening around it's good to see what happens when the big males move away and all of the other predators and scavengers move in wonderful right guys I think it's time for us to go and have some breakfast but we will see everyone this afternoon for 
or sunset safari I'm sure it's gonna be or I hope it's going to be a very good one but what I do know is that everyone's gonna try and make their best so that we have a wonderful afternoon too Ooh. all right goodbye everyone we'll see you later on today